My climate story has been more about getting the students to see what's going on around them. The biggest impact I can have is dozens, low hundreds numbers of kids every year coming through the experiences that we're giving them. Doing this climate story workshop with the students vis-a-vis -vis Penn has been empowering for our students because it gave them permission to share what they thought was not even that significant. And it gave us as teachers a much more compassionate lens through which we can understand them. The odds were kind of against something like this ever really working, that people would be able to show up to these workshops and be engaged and do emotional work, and yet it happened every week. It's a kind of a cathartic experience for people to finally be able to talk with others about climate change and climate impacts, in some cases climate anxiety, that they've been sitting with all alone. It's from these human stories that were inspired to take action and inspired to really care about this issue. One story might seem small at first, but if we have lots of stories together, you can see the trends across the stories. Stories are what make quantitative data meaningful. In the last 100 to 200 years, the release of carbon emissions related to fossil fuels has completely changed that dynamic. It's really like increasingly wrapping a blanket around the planet that holds in the, the heat. I mean, we had, for the first time, schools unable to be open, lack of air conditioning, and it's too hot for students to learn. It's not safe for them to be indoors. That's pretty incredible. Climate change is hard to talk about. When or if we talk about it, we often use big numbers, like levels of atmospheric CO2 or rates of sea level rise. How can the vastness of climate change be made meaningful on a human scale? Storytelling is the foundation of community and culture. Telling stories is a powerful form of climate action and can show how climate change links to other disasters, including the wildfire spread of COVID-19. Enter My Climate Story, a public engagement project seeking to help you document and share your climate story. In workshops for climate storytellers from the sixth grade on up, participants are sharing how we're making sense of global climate change. Gathered together in a public story bank and shared across social media, these stories fuel the movement for meaningful action on climate. They show how local climate impacts are shaping life stories and how they're making us feel. For example, your city might have recently been experiencing hotter summers, making it unbearable to sleep at night. Or you're having heavier rains, making your basement wet and moldy. Or maybe your region has experienced increased hurricane intensity and frequency, putting your life and property at risk. No matter how small or large your story may be, we want to know, how are you sensing climate change? How does it make you feel? Will you share your story? This project was really born in a classroom that I was um, facilitating for the Teachers Institute of Philadelphia. My teachers were obviously already interested in climate and environment, and yet they would say things like, well, when climate change comes to Philadelphia, and I thought like, what we really need to do is to personalize this global issue, like bring it down to a scale that makes sense and that allows people to actually feel what this means. The conversation had a natural flow to it. We were able to accomplish a lot talking about what happened. So we talked about the difference between kind of climate change from the last couple of years and this year, specifically the winter time. My story it ultimately involves the temperature on Halloween. And so it's something I notice every year. It used to be snowy around Halloween in Baltimore. I dressed up as a Yeti once, and now it's it's been so warm on Halloween that I don't wear winter coats. I feel like I should have a more dramatic story, like something more impactful but this is just the one that resonates with me every single year the most. It was November. I just grabbed the big jacket and I go out and I'm loading groceries into people's cars and it's hot. One of the customers mentions that, oh, it's such nice weather out. 
It is nice outside, but it is November and it should not be 75 degrees. Is, is no one else concerned about this issue? I decided, well, I have agency. I'm living, I'm breathing. I can do something about it. People like to think that climate change is an impending, unending natural phenomenon that you as an individual can't have an impact on. People need to realize that they too can be that act of change, that instant of change. You have agency, you can change your surroundings. There's this idea that in 50 years, everything will fall apart, everything will be ruined. 50 years is three times my lifetime. And I like to think I've accomplished a good amount of things in my lifetime. The more young people we recruit, the better the future will be overall. In addition to teaching, which is my passion, I have another passion, which is photography. As a biology teacher, the thing I'm most excited about is evolution and talking about organisms in an evolutionary way. And then obviously climate change plays into that. The periodical cicada that comes out every 13 to 17 years, sometimes they will come out early. Sometimes they will come out uh, one or two years later. I think it's a little bellwether for micro-climate changes that you might not be seeing in other ways. The little picture is just to kind of key into what they understand about themselves, their local world, their local community, about what they want to stay constant and they don't want to change. Even if it's not initially connected to climate, there's always a way to bring it back. Almost everything you do to reduce energy and carbon in a building saves you money. Philadelphia is an interesting case because it's an older city. It has a huge housing stock of mostly row houses. That older group of buildings, in addition to wasting a lot of energy, they are also falling apart. Most of those buildings are probably leaking water in some degree. So if you fix that to reduce energy, suddenly you're making a healthier indoor environment. Asthma incidences go down dramatically. We're all concerned about carbon, but the amounts of co-benefits that go along with this, if you do this stuff right, are huge. Mis padres crecieron en un rancho en Zacatecas, México, un rancho donde vivieron en la tierra y comungaban con los animales y con las plantas en una forma muy natural. Pero con la globalización y con el exporte de productos de vegetación, la tierra ya no siguió siendo fértil. Ellos migraron a Estados Unidos y empezaron una vida acá. Y en esa comunidad es donde yo empecé por primera vez a ver las injusticias de crecer pobre. Un sistema donde hay más restaurante de comida de cadena grande y solo un supermercado. Cuando vemos un plato de comida, no practicamos lo que es ver ese plato y entender que cada elemento que está en ese plato viene de un universo de personas y de sus recursos. Entonces, cuando yo enseño a jóvenes, yo siempre les recuerdo que ellos son los que van a crecer en este ambiente y que en mucha manera los adultos y nosotros que no hemos tomado la responsabilidad necesaria y la acción extrema I come from the Commonwealth of Dominica. It's a land of 365 rivers. Dominica, it's at the center of my climate story. It's where I called home for the first 10 years of my life. It's where I return. It's still very much my home place. My climate story has to do with the potential of losing my island, losing the place where I first knew myself, where I first came into my own. In 2015, Dominica was impacted by Tropical Storm Erica. And while Dominica was still rebuilding, it was hit by Hurricane Maria. Over 90% of the island was left either homeless or partially homeless. Every time a tragedy like this strikes, I am concerned about the further loss of my land. We think of children like a, a cup or something. You just fill things in, fill things in. but. The idea of creativity is that there's something within the student that they could offer. I became really committed to making sure that the students that I had understood what we were doing, what we could do better than preserving and protecting this planet for them, for their children, and forever. Trying to find that empathy piece is to why it matters. We try to make the connection of where people live 
how they ended up living there, and then how the current environmental situation's impacting them and how we kind of project that into the future. My goal is to get students to, one, activate their voice and to feel a lot more comfortable telling their stories. When we talk about global warming and climate change, it's like far out there. But if you bring it like to their own environment and what they know, by observing, you're really participating in studying science. And by telling your own story about the climate, you are, you are inventing new, new way of looking at the world. I see the energy in the kids, but it's that energy that says that this, this is where I can make the most difference. It's essential, right, that people think about their relationship to the planet and everything that they do. We're starting to think about how this project and the tools that we've developed with Philadelphians could also be spread more widely across the Philadelphia region, but can also be adapted in other places. Once these students leave the classroom, what are they going to have with them? We all have these experiences already. It's just about realizing how they fit into this huge global issue. And I think that's one of my favorite things about the workshops is that we're less teaching, but more giving people the tools to recognize what's going on around them. It kind of extends out afterward from every participant. How could we bring something that is so abstract, so sort of distant, how could we bring it down to a personal and emotional level? And that's why we call the project My Climate Story. It's really about saying every single person has a climate story. You have to learn how to observe and to process what it is you're thinking. This is one of the real strengths of it and what it has to offer. So in working with the story bank, the, the documentary, and then as we create the companion workbook, we'll have a, a rich array of materials where people can see themselves. They can see that their stories have value. They How could we bring these resources to people who seeing the tagline climate storytelling or climate change would ordinarily just say no? That's a new kind of challenge for this project. It's not only showing that the climate crisis is here and a compelling issue we need to look at, there's optimism and threads of positivity in there. Those threads are some of the most compelling things in the future, I think, in getting climate action to be taken.